real well. It's a. Uh, I don't even know what I. It's a tick, tick snuck. I'll leave it like that. I think it's fast. Alright, you ready? Write these down? That all looks good to me. Looks good, alright. practice yesterday and had oh, we had a mess right from the start kind of like a loaded up mess and right from the minute I got out there and then it cleared up I had one eight lap session and it cleared up about four laps into it and run good for about two laps and then dropped a cylinder so we the rev limiter for whatever reason was set at like 6700 and it's supposed to be set at 6,200. So we got that all figured out, got that set down to 6,200 and didn't get to go back out. But uh, anyways, it's race day and we're getting ready to head over to the track and see if we can't get this dead cylinder figured out. And then we go and practice one practice, then go out for a second practice, which is qualifying, and then we'll run our race. What's going on? So, we're changing the oil to a little heavier weight oil than the break-in oil that was in it to see if it'll pump the lifter up. We're thinking that the other oil was, uh, we've heard so many different things down here about these crate engines. I just, I'm not, experience at all with the crate engine so we're asking around like the old street stock days getting three different answers but we're changing plugs we're changing the oil why what's it doing it's missing it's had a dead cylinder it's like a lifter ain't pumping up take the valve covers off and there's rocker arms loose readjust them Just, this crate engine shits for the birds. Till I get, till I learn it. You know, I gotta learn it. Need to, need to learn what these crate engines are all about. Who? think so, yep. We fired her up. She's sounding all on all eight, firing off. So that's good. That's that was, We weren't that way uh, uh, last night. We had seven. And that's if we were lucky to have seven. But it was seven, because it was one bad plug.
I also would like to say right here, this group working on the car is Wilson Motorsports. The driver of the late model next to us, Isabella Robusto, just got a ride at Venturi Motorsports, so congratulations on that to all you guys.
Jeffrey White going to come back on the outside. David LeBeau, Art Koonsman, Jeffrey White, Greg Dame, Hank Baker. If you're still in it, you can win it. Here we go. Green is out. Closing on the inside there. Oh, Probably. shower of sparks there. He's got more damage than we thought. He, I figured he had quite a bit of damage. That's the he's still out there. Yeah, he piled in pretty hard, and he's got things dragging the racetrack up the track. Car not going to handle. He's got a track bar or something to drag it. Yes. If you recall, Jeffrey White had contact with Baker earlier. Whoa! Okay, so Whiskey Racer here, and we just got back from our first trip to New Smyrna. Now, first time racing in Florida, first time with this division, first time with this, these drivers. We had an excellent time. We uh, just had engine problems, you know, right from the start, and I feel like I kind of want to put the blame on myself. Uh, just, you know, I'm, I drive my car, I turn 8,000 RPMs with it. And I knew getting in this car, being only, only able to turn 6,200, uh, on account of a rev chip or a rev box, it was going to be, I was going to think the car was a pooch. I knew that. Uh, I don't know what that being said. I got to the track 15 minutes before my first practice and I jumped right, I got dressed, jumped right in the car, you know, and took it out basically. So went out there and the red box wasn't set. It was six, it was set to 6,800. I'm not sure exactly why. First time out on the track, car run pretty good. It, it, it run on all late, let's say that. It, it felt like, and uh, at the end of the practice, it dropped the cylinder and come in. I hit the recall and I'm like 6,700, roughly 6,700. I'm like, oh, that's not good. That's rev chip or rev box must not be working. So I told Jerry, I said, we're Mr. J. I told Mr. J, I said, we have a problem. I said, it, Got a mess in, in the engine. Uh, started off running pretty good and ended up with a mess at the end of it. So, you know, I just jumping in it real quick, just it didn't sound like it was turning much RPM at all. I knew there was gonna be a difference between my engine turning 8,000 and that engine, and it really sounded a big difference. So, you know, I felt like we were barely hitting 5,500 RPM. Uh, but I was trying to hit my marks on the track or get to know where my marks were on the track, most importantly, and watching oil pressure and water temperature gauge. That's that's my main two gauges. In my car, that's the only two gauges I got. I don't even have a tack. I know exactly where the RPMs need to be. I know the car very well. And I figured in my mind, I could do the same thing with this car and know where the RPMs were, but they were 6,700 RPM. Sounded like 57 to me, but I guess that's the difference in me being used to the 8,000 RPM. I guess we're gonna chalk that one up to the red box not being set. It's got two dials on it. I don't even know how to set it. I had the tech guy at New Smyrna set it for me. Uh, and I ended up having him set that on race day, so just a, just a bad deal. So now, I don't even know if that was what uh, bent the valve. I was told that those ha those engines can handle 6,700, but I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. We, I guess, learned the hard way on that one with the rev box not being set right. And we just, th this car got, you know, put together fast. It, it, it just, 
it got put together not i'm not saying fast but i mean up to the deadline we were thrashing if you will so we had a brake leak in the back uh never bled the brakes after we had the brake leak in the back so got out there and didn't realize until in the race that we had no rear brakes i started dialing rear brake into it and it just still lock up the front brakes going in the corner so i had to adjust myself with my driving for that i had to you know mess with the mess it had a backfiring through the carburetor twice uh just uh a lot of stuff to overcome and then that you know and that I'm, I'm trying to get to know a new track a new car it was just a lot of happenings fast there to overcome so i did the best that i could uh i i feel like it was the only good thing that come of the of the race uh me and mr j and mrs j and my wife all got to know each other we worked together it, that all worked pretty well uh it, that all worked really well um so besides that right there and the me getting to know the track now i'm not saying up to speed know the track but i got some marks to hit and and travis was very good at telling me exactly how to get around that track and i picked that up right away so we get this new engine in and, get, and it gets running right and the 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 rev box is set right now so we won't have to worry about over revving it if that's what we did if that's what caused the bent valve uh just i never i've never felt like such a failure really in, in quite some time of racing just what could went wrong went wrong you know on that trip we worked on this engine we you know i traced wires i went through the firing order i traced wires through the car seen one little thing changed it and it just wasn't that wasn't the the issue it like i just said it ended up being a bent valve but we had the the guys next to us in the late model team there was uh wilson racing i believe um yeah uh mr upchurch uh just come over and worked on our car for a good solid 45 minutes and did everything he could and we just never could get it running right we decided to race i told mr j i said when i went out there i said i'm gonna as long as the oil pressure and water temperature stays good i'm gonna stay out there and try to learn the track for the next time that we're here so that way i, I spend less time trying to find marks and hit marks so that's what i did i i went out there like a serious pooch uh six cylinder engine trying to run with those guys it, it was, there was no running with them we just uh <laughs> you can see in one of the restarts i tried to shift you know with a low gear that's way too low to to be trying to take off in but with no horsepower i mean i got away with it a little bit then shifted her to to drive and just i mean i did everything i could possibly do i i, I tried my hardest i put every effort forward and I told the, the, the man who owns the car, Mr. J, I said, when we first started talking, I told him I could win in it down there. And he, I'm determined I will get his car in victory lane down there. And you can bet on that. That's, that's definitely, I am very determined to do that, especially after this first showing that we had. I, you don't meet too many people that are more determined. I'm going to do what it takes to make it happen. I will get that car in victory lane for the team you know we don't want nobody looking bad travis mr j how any of them we just don't we got a car to win we really do that car handles very well it's it's very similar to destiny i didn't get to make adjustments i didn't really need to like the car i could early apex it i could do what i wanted i could i could cut down it just did what it was supposed to do right from the start i mean as far as that car coming out of travis's shop i it just rocket ship fast right from the start 
just it was too bad that we had engine problems of whatever it was. And that's just, it's too bad because I would have liked to have went down to Mary first time in the car, first time on the track and run with those guys. I would like to have seen where we stacked up. So that way we could build on knowing what we needed to fix if we didn't win for the next time. Or not so much fix, but build off of. But <clears throat> we learned from that one. We're going on to the next one, February 12th. We'll be down there at New Smyrna again to run the uh, single race in the World Series. So we get this car in victory lane and we might be going on to bigger and better things. You know, a uh, real engine in the car, uh, open by that I mean an uh, engine that we built, you know, how we want it. So that way, I've heard so many things about these crate engines and these guys running these crate engines. I don't know what to believe, how that, you, get, you got guys telling you that all oh, their putting three quarter cranks in them. They're putting the big cranks because they don't get tech down there. They're doing this and they're doing that. The race, as far as the race went, I watched those guys. I was paying attention very well to how those guys were racing. And I'd li I'd like right now, I'd like to thank uh, Speedway videos because he put up some videos of them re racing previous years and I watched them then. Um, they're a good group of guys this, in this, in this EMOD division. They're, 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 they're a good, they're a good group of guys. You can just tell it from their racing and, uh, their interviews at the end of the race in victory lane. You can just tell that these guys are a good group of guys. Uh, I'm going to enjoy racing with them when we get racing. So now, like I was saying in the race, I was watching these guys race and, you know, I got home and watched the video, the Speedway, Speedway videos. I hope I'm getting that right. Uh, I, I, I watched the race through his lens and I watched it through my GoPro and I was watching and while I was racing, I had plenty of time because we're going so slow. I'm going so slow. I got to watch everybody do their thing, you know, up ahead. And so... I did notice one thing the there was a there's a couple cautions and one was with the 41 car and I think it was maybe the 8 or something like that maybe it might have been the eventual winner I don't remember who he was with on that first one but you can see what happens is is he's he's going down the straightaway and they're going down the straightaway and and the 41 dives it in in the corner and hits the guy in the left rear quarter, maybe a little further up on that first one, but I'm not making that, saying that that's his fault, but I feel truthfully like I learned something long time ago. When you are trying to pass somebody, I don't never pass anybody going into a corner that I feel like the guy that can avoid that in this situation, in both of these situations, because it happens twice, is the 41 car he can avoid that he, you know the 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 top car is not going to come down onto the 41 car because he doesn't want to wreck and he doesn't want to cause a wreck and he just didn't know he was there the, he didn't know the 41 was there i can almost guarantee that on both of them instances that the guy on top didn't know that the spotter didn't tell him or whatever it was it happens fast that's why you don't put yourself in that position if you're going to pass down low I feel like you need to pass down low coming out of the corner. You need to, however you need to set them up so you can come out out of the corner and pass them low. And then that way, when you're down going into the corner at the next corner, down you're going in, you're side by side with him. You did your pass coming out. That's how I personally attack that. And then if you think you want to pass going into the corner, you, I pass them going high that's 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 how I pass going into a corner and in the second one that was one of the hardest hits I've ever seen like that was definitely ranking up there with one of the hardest hits I've ever seen with the 75 and the 41 so it happened exactly the same in the same corner now the kid's dad told him 
He says, the guy come down on you. Okay, yep, he's right. The guy come down on him. But if you don't do those passes going in the corner like that, you don't have to worry about that happening. You, you, if you pass in high, that doesn't happen, okay? That's what I've learned. <laughs> I've, in the street stock days, I've done that a couple times and wrecked somebody and we wrecked and it was bad. So I learned quick not to do that. And this kid did not mean to wreck the guy. You, you'll hear, I'll put in this video. The kid did not mean to wreck the guy. He did it accidentally. And the second time he did it accidentally as well. You, you'll hear the kid is all distraught. He didn't even finish the race when he could have. The car was capable of finishing the race, but he was so shook up from the wreck that he didn't want to finish the race. So he, he doesn't know, he didn't mean to do that. I'm fine, I just... Uh, What's up, bud? Is he all right? Yeah, he's okay. okay. And that was not your fault. With that, I just feel bad. Man, that son, was, it was scary. Not, I was just... Oh, son, it was not your fault. You were clearly know, underneath but him and that he see, turned into you. Oh, I, I see him just son, go straight. Listen, take a breath. Dylan's okay, okay? He's up, he's out of the car, and he's walking. So breathe, okay? Listen, son, it's a racing thing. I know. He hit your tire, and, and the car just went squirrely. You know what I mean? I, I've never seen a car do that before. I mean, you were clearly... Me, man. All I see is the car go straight to the wall. It went straight to the wall, and he hit head on, man. That was an ugly fucking wreck. If you don't want to finish this race, pull the car in. I'm totally okay with that. I don't want to finish this race. It's just easily, it's, a, it's avoidable, is all I'm saying. I'm not saying what you done was wrong or anything like that. I'm just trying to pass down a little wisdom, I guess you could say. That's, I never pass going into a corner like that. And if it is that, if I, it is that I do that, it's that I know for a fact that guy's staying in the second groove. I just know that's what he's going to do. And I still won't even do it because you just never know. You just never know if he's going to come down or not, even if there's radios. You just don't know. The When you're going around the racetrack, the thing is, is when you come off the front stretch wall, you come down into the center of the corner and into the bottom. That's just the way you race. Just one of them things. I will, I will set guys up, passing them high on the, on the, you know, on the, on the, going in high, and you know, and, the, and, the, and they're a little bit faster, so you can't quite get around them. And then you just duck below them coming out. And then you're down the front stretch side by side with them. And then they have no choice but to stay up there. Just That's just one of the things that I do. It can save a lot of wrecked race cars. I hated to see it because both of those dudes that wrecked at that second wreck are both pretty good. They're, I haven't met either one of them, but you can just tell they're, they're, they're good dudes. They didn't, they didn't, they're not meaning to wreck nobody. Just one of them racing incidences that you hate to see. I hated to see that because that 75 car hit that wall so hard, it just was a hard hit. And it destroyed his car. It sucks. It sucks. And then the 41 was so shook up, he didn't even finish the race. So just those incidences are, are avoidable. And that's just how I feel about that. So now that I'm done with that rant, um, not really a rant, just a... Uh, Hopefully, you know, you can avoid that situation in the future. That's all I'm hoping to get from that. Anybody out there that, that accidentally does that or does that not knowing that it's maybe not the best thing to do. Anyways, 21 minutes. Um, what else am I missing here? Uh, that video, thanking Speedway videos. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, so the 12th, February 12th, we'll be back at New Smyrna. There's, Mr. J wants that car in victory lane, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to get it in victory lane. So I think that's it. Uh, we'll be back to New Smyrna, um, and we'll do some more racing. And you can bet you're going to see that 16 car in victory lane. 
And I'm going to get an interview with uh, Mr. J. And we'll get to know him a little bit. So that way you guys know who it is put, put me in the car. And you can get to know him a little bit. He's a cool dude. So, yeah. We'll do that. But anyways, yeah. We will see you down in Florida at New Smyrna Speedway on February 12th.